How y'all doing? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Another episode. Angels bow before him. 30 minutes. Heaven and earth adore him. With the Perrys. And a mighty God we serve. Mm. You be putting like your whole like forearm into the clap. Hey man, like hey. That's man. just so interesting. Don't to me. don't come in how I worship. Okay, so <laughs> I w- I will never forget like the pressure I used to feel to worship like other people. You know, like it's like you know churches where like worship is loud and expressive and exuberant, which is beautiful. I love that, but how it they can become judgmental when you don't do it as much as they do mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so i will i started to feel like am i like not saved for real yeah because i don't i really be talking to god with my eyes closed and my mouth closed like i don't be like i really be having like a little worship ser- service I mean, I, you know all my my stories and my testimony how like when i first came to the church mm-hmm. and i didn't grow up in the church and all my aunties why you don't shout <laughs> why you don't run get it out Quenching the spirit. No, legit. I'm like, auntie, it's nothing in me that want to run. <laughs> I just. I, I, I can't even imagine you running. No. Nah. No, nah, at my auntie Baptist church. From the police. That was the <laughs> funnest part to me. Like, there was this one lady who, when worship got real high, she would always start running around the church. And, like, she wasn't out of breath and she was crying. All the, It was just amazing amazing like it was like holy spirit cardio like i just had never <laughs> seen that and it was just as a five-year-old did I tell to you, see somebody running around the church babe did i tell you uh i think i told you about the lady and the fact we was they was baptist doing that baptist don't they don't run no nah, I, I told you when i first started going to church with my grandma when mm. i was like real little mm-hmm. uh, i used to always love going to church to see this one lady like you know like when they start dancing mm-hmm. and the music and she used to always sit in the corner and she used to act like she was boxing the devil Oh, so yeah. she'd be in the corner like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it wait, was so interesting. Remember to me. You, you remember you said your grandma when she would pray, she made like a weird sound. She'd go, uh, "Hoy, <laughs> hoy, <laughs> hoy." I don't know what "hoy" means. <laughs> hoy, and she's always like bending her shoulder back, like "hoy." That's when the. That's when you get the this anyway. I was like, yeah, yeah, hoy. I don't hoy. know who hoy is. Anyway, <laughs> we 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 have discussed a, a version of this topic before, which is dating. Uh, I think in the first season we had some type of conversation around men and why, like maybe like the scarcity or the shortage of Christian men out here in the world. And we've also discussed like our dating process as well. Yeah, but we, I think we just wanted to speak more specifically to dating again because it's a thing you know people want to meet people that they hope will be a person that they one day marry yeah but during this pandemic it's hard out here yeah during this pandemic i think a, a lot of uh i've gotten a lot more questions about dating uh, really yeah i think people were not in church as much mm-hmm. and so christians were kind of like finding themselves in you know spaces peculiar where, situations yeah you know and like oh i like you know mm-hmm. i like tyrone he i mean he listened to jeezy every day uh but <laughs> he got he got he got good morals and you know um you know and so like i think i've i've just received a lot of a, a lot of different questions about dating um during this pandemic what, what was dating like for you pre pre jackie Pre Jackie, mm-hmm. I mean, you know this because of course I do. You know, you knew my girlfriends. Uh, well, that's the funny thing. None of them were your girlfriends. Well, they were women that you treated like girlfriends. Wow, wow! You just calling me out in front of everybody. I'm just saying it's. A, I'm just saying it's like it's the, people watching this, you, ma'am. I, I, it was only one. Y'all have a hat? No, not. Out of all the females that I was encouraging you about, you wasn't pursuing none of them. Y'all was just enjoying y'all little lives, and you know. You okay? So you you acting like I was just straight out here like being sinful. Did I say that? Well, well, well. It can be implied that I was out here like loosey goosey with all these. Were women. you were you being mature? No, I wasn't mature. There we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> now go ahead with your story. No, nah, like I think dating for me, um, it it was um, it was aimless. Like I I didn't have, mm-hmm. um, I didn't know where I was going. You know, I I just knew that I wanted to be married one day. <laughs> I, I knew. Uh, well, let me let me let me let me not say that. I I had an idea that I might be married one day and I was trying to figure out what I wanted as a young man, what I wanted in a wife, what a wife l- needed to look like. Mm. Uh, and so I just didn't know. Uh, I don't I don't know what I wanted. I didn't mm. know what I wanted. And so uh, for me, I, I dated people who and I talked to girls that I that I liked or that interest me uh, until, you know, something happened that showed us like, oh, we we probably not for each other. Yeah. And it just kind of like organically, you know, faded away. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of experience with the dating pool because, again, I was a lesbian. So I... Really? Yeah, you didn't know that. Wow. I thought I told you about it. I forgot about that. So, like, I didn't like <laughs> men, <laughs> period. So I, they just weren't of interest to me. And so the little bit of dating I did, which was me talking to two dudes for, like, a solid... I don't know, two, three weeks. So Jackie used to talk to this dude um, in his Air Force Ones, used to be crinkly. We're not going to talk about him because he might be watching this. I'm just saying, he knew he had crinkly Air Force Ones. No, I just, so (laughs) with that particular situation, I thought, oh, maybe God wants me to be with him so that I'm not as vain. Right, yeah. You know, like maybe you just need to be okay with somebody that 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 can't dress and i i think i think you know them dudes that tie their shoes up real tight listen i i think <laughs> some people are called to people that can't dress because that should not be a non-negotiable it it, it can't be you can help a man learn how to dress i'm just saying you though, can't help a man learn how to be a man i get it though but when you tie your shoes up real tight that's a that's but a, if he has the humility to, let's go ahead nah. to the store we we gonna show you how to put on shoes. No, for the men, you gonna who, stop no, wearing. Listen to me. Listen. You gonna stop wearing these bootcut jeans. L- listen to what I'm saying, though, babe. For the <laughs> men who tie their shoes up really tight, that's a character trait. Listen, because <laughs> when, when your shoes, when, when you don't care about how your how your pants meet your shoes and they really tight and your tongue barely what showing. What if he walks long distances to work? Okay, and so he just wants to make sure to that he wants to make sure that his shoes no, stay on. He be at Christian concerts doing this. Okay, so I had that situation, <laughs> and that wasn't the Lord's will. And then, and this, then you met me uh, uh, years later, and then because this was Flyers. all this was all in the beginning of my Christian faith, where I felt like because of the the world that I had just come out of, which is like you know just homosexuality and all the things that like I was supposed to get with a guy to make me become more straight. Hmm. So that's one part. But there's also this loneliness piece, which is in the world, I was always talking to somebody. I always had somebody to text, always had somebody to come over. And so it was, it was uh, uncomfortable for me to come to Jesus and just be without anybody to talk to so some of us like okay i'm supposed to talk to boys let me talk to boys and there was this one (laughs) guy who i started uh talk to we talked for maybe a solid eight days because we got on the phone and he was like so like do you he wasn't a christian he was like so like we can't do nothing i said what you mean he was like we we like you don't have like sex and nothing like that i was like nah he was like you don't like do nothing nothing I was like, nah, like I'm a Christian. And you could tell it really couldn't compute to him <laughs> that if he were to be with me, that that wouldn't be a thing. He's like, oh, I don't, why am I with you? Like it just, but <laughs> no, he didn't say that because I, I think they always think that if they stay a lo- around long enough, I'll eventually give in. Right. But to me, it clicked. I was like, oh, this just isn't going to work because the fact that purity in the sense of, uh, of, of abstaining from sexual sin, the fact that that doesn't even make sense to you means that your mind is not renewed. Yeah. And, and I don't have time to convince you about why the Lord is Lord of your body. I, I don't got energy for that. Yeah, yeah. And Speaking so, of that, did you have any situations where you were a Christian trying to make it work with a, with a non-believer? Um, yes, one time. How was uh, that? It, it just it just it just didn't work out like now I did you to. know she was a non-believer or was she a casual churchgoer that didn't have the spirit no because there's a lot of those too 
No, no. So the first relationship that I got in um, as a Christian, she was a Christian. Um, well, I thought she was. Mm-hmm. She was a churchgoer. And then she decided that, oh, this church thing isn't good for me. And so she went back into the world. Mm-hmm. And then the second relationship that I got in, I got in to a relationship with the girl who wasn't a Christian. And um, that didn't work out mm-hmm. uh, because we couldn't stay pure. And I, yeah. I eventually had to break up with her because I wanted to be holy. Yeah, it was hard because I really liked her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other relationships, it was just me um, talking to Christians. I was just, I only dated Christians mm-hmm. uh, or talked to Christians. Yeah. We heard through the grapevine uh, from Kim that there is a, I don't know if it's a, a I don't know if it's bigger now than it was, but like that is hard out here for singles it is. <laughs> and that because it's hard out here, a lot of singles are just like, you know what? I don't have time to wait on a man or a woman who is a Christian. So let me go ahead and open up my, you know, my world to non-Christians because I'll have more options. What do you think about that? I think so for me. So let me just say this for. For the record, I have seen um, believers be with unbelievers and God has come along and save their significant other like somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. So I I feel like a lot of our grandmas have that testimony. Yeah. (laughs) Seriously, <laughs> your I, grandma was the Christian, and your, all, all, and your granddaddy. All wasn't. the examples I've seen is like older couples, mm-hmm. like my aunt who stayed with my uncle for years and just prayed for his salvation. Yeah. But typically, uh, when I saw that happen, it was it was they both started off as unbelievers, oh, and yeah. one became a Christian and prayed that God would save their significant other. You That's know what I'm true. saying? Um, I think to I think for a Christian to to like intentionally choose someone who doesn't know jesus Mm -hmm. uh, because of whatever reason Mm -hmm. i think you you're probably not wayne or i I question if if you're wayne all of the spiritual implications and all of the difficulties that they might bring because uh for whatever reason this person has sparked your interest but have you considered all the the baggage that that person would bring when well, you when you when you serve two masters? There's le- there's some legit logical reasons. One, you might like their face, mm-hmm. nice face. Uh, two, they might have a good job. Awesome. You you could take me out to eat. You could pay for it. You know, you ain't got to say, "Hey, I'll cash mm-hmm. up you later." Like it, it's like it's a situation. Right. They might have some ambition. That you appreciate. Might be a hustler. Yeah. Might have an education. All the things. And, and, and this is really important for women. They, they, they might not be corny. Because a lot of. That was your thing. Oh, that was huge to me. Because I was just like, why is all these Christian. All of them so. I mean, it's some women that really. That's on their list. Cornball. That's, 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 that's in the oh, list. That's what they like. I, I guess so. Because they choose them. For me, that wasn't on the list. I, I, I needed somebody who, who, who you, you, you didn't know if they were actually saved unless they opened up their mouth. When they walked down the street, like you, your eyes are yellow, your, your pants are sagging, you, know, you don't speak right all the time, what? you got hands, but you love the Lord. That's perfect. Whoa. That's perfect. You made me sound like a straight <laughs> drug addict. <laughs> your eyes is yellow, your Not pants. Not a drug addict. A drug dealer. So you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I wanted. I wanted what somebody. Are you talking about? I wanted somebody that probably sold drugs once upon a time, but they gave their life to Jesus. So what does that do for you? Explain to the people. I'm attracted to. I'm a, I'm attracted to that. So so what? <laughs> Especially because you got to understand, I'm a very aggressive woman. I'm okay. really dominant, and so I needed a man who is equally or more dominant than me because if i see anything in a man that i can't control it automatically lose i don't have any respect for him and if i can't respect you we can't we can't be we can't be good and so for you when we first met it was clear that you were not afraid of me which was huge absolutely it was not. clear that you also respected me mm-hmm. and like wanted me to share my voice and my opinions and all my things like you never quenched 
the personality that God has given me. And then you're not, you're not a, you're not a cornball. So define cornball. <laughs> I don't want to define it because it's probably people sitting next to their cornball husbands, and I don't want them to feel shame. <laughs> I don't want them to feel shame. That's not nice. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I don't want to do that. You're crazy. I'm just saying. Okay, different different strokes for different folks. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I, I I think I think it's good for us to try to define some type of clarity because I think because apparently this is a thing what? for for women and I think a lot of men. It's like, man, I I want a particular type of man or a particular type of woman Mm -hmm. but it's a shortage of this in the christian community yeah and so when you say they want to they want to russell wilson but all they got is futures you don't get the connection sierra used to be with future the rapper hood thug all the things russell wilson though was actually the good man even though he's not the thuggish, ruggish bone man. And so what you're saying is that maybe it's a it's a possibility that that some women out here, when it comes to dating um, um, secular men, is that they don't they're looking for someone that's kind of like in between the I two. Don't, I don't know. I th- I think at the end of the day, I think we all have our types and we all have our lists and we all have what we want. And when we cannot find what we want, sometimes we'll settle for what we don't need. Mm. And so I think at at, at some point we have to, I think people should have their types, but I don't think that you should live so rigidly where you are turning away men who are good men just because they don't fit your list. Okay. But at the same time, I think some people can be so overly spiritual where it's like, yeah, he, he might not have a universally attractive face. And yeah, his shoe strings might be tied real tight. And yeah, he might have a real, uh, you know, quiet, like author, author the anteater voice. But like, <laughs> he loves God. And it's like, I got to be attracted to you. A, at least a look like there so has you, to be something. So, you, so you're saying that that in order for us to be with the 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 person that God has for us in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes we might have to settle. Yes, I th- I think there's a I think there's the potential for settling. Yet at the same time, the reality that there needs to be something that I'm attracted to, and so, because my mama used to say she was like a fine man that doesn't act right will always become ugly. And so there's there's this sense where it can't always be about everything I want, like there there like because I can get everything I want and find out that that wasn't even what I needed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So for me, the Lord was just kind enough to provide my type. But there are some people where their provision is not happening, so they're settling for people that are not good for them. We just went in a lot of different ways. Yeah, but, yeah. So back to the situation at hand. When it comes to dating unbelievers, I understand the reason and the logic behind it. Because again, they might check out all they, they like they might check off twenty nine boxes except the Jesus box. Mm-hmm. And from Kim's experience and some other folks, there seems to be underneath that some hope that oh, he might not be a Christian, but if I get with him because I'm a Christian. He gonna repent one day, and yeah. we'll all be good together. Yeah. Do you think that's realistic? No. I, well, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, of course, I think anything is possible. You know, we don't with we, God. Yeah. yeah, with God. Like, and so like we don't know who God has called to Himself and who's going who, who or who He's going to call to Himself. Uh-huh. But I think for you to bank on that um, is dangerous. Mm-hmm. I think it could be potentially you know dangerous. And I think that. Um, if he checks off all or she checks off all of these boxes because men settle too. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, she got a BBL and, uh, you know, her legs look, never mind. Her, you know, when people, they bottom look like the letter P. Yeah. 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 Big butts. Uh, but little legs. Yeah. Right. And so like, I think, I think that I think that men and women and women settle uh, for for dating somebody who's not a Christian because they check all of these boxes. Mm-hmm. But I think it's dangerous when you when you when you get into a relationship with someone and you're unequally yoked with them because it's going to create a whole different set of problems. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you probably are not considering. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. when it's time to pray, 
when it's time to fast about something serious, mm-hmm. you, uh, you having security in his hustle or you having security in his face, that can't sustain you when the stuff hit the fan. Okay. Um, you're going to want to be with somebody who knows Jesus. Yeah. And so um, I just think that it, it, it's, it's dangerous to have faith that God is going to come along and save them. Um, and w- if he doesn't do it on your time, if he doesn't do it at all, mm-hmm. then you're stuck with somebody who can't who can't hold you down spiritually. Because I said this earlier, I said it, it is it is some crazy faith to get with somebody with in the hopes of that they will one day become Christian when there is no promise from God that that may or may not happen. Right. But why not have that same faith that if God can save them, then God can actually provide you someone that's already saved. Yeah. Like if God is that powerful and that sovereign, then surely he can give you like somebody that is Christian, yeah. not somebody that might become Christian. Cause like who you marry, it is ridiculous how important that is. Yeah. What if your spouse isn't saved yet, you know? What do like, you mean? Like, because, because... Your uh, spouse or the person you're dating? No, I'm saying, like, what if you're, like, because uh, cause I, th- I think, I think we, we have to stop <clears throat> being impatient in our dating process, and we have to stop putting limitations on God and his time and, and his sovereignty, because the person that you're attracted to, maybe they are truly out there right now and haven't met the Lord yet. And in two, three years, that person oh. that God has, has for you. You're saying that the person that God has for you may be out there in the world and is saved, but our impatience is actually not leaving any room for that person to come along. Yeah. We're busying ourselves with people that aren't good for us. Absolutely. Because in 06, when God saved me, I didn't know that God was going to save my wife in 09. 08. 08. Yep. I didn't know. But you was out there, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, we don't think about that. We don't think about that. No, like, God has somebody that 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 He has uniquely designed that will be perfect for you. Um, But our 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 lack of impatience, we we want to we want to date someone who checks off all of these boxes except following Jesus. And it's like, no, like, be patient, sis. Be patient, bro. But I empathize because people are getting married later and later. Like people are getting married and like what used to, you know, be getting married, nine, 19, 20, 21, 22. People are getting married now later. Um, and attached to that is also fertility. Yeah. So there's this fear of, yo, like I'm waiting, but I also want to have a baby. And yeah. it's, it's going to become harder for me to give birth to a child the longer I wait. So I completely understand the fear because that's what a lot of this is, is the, the fear underneath it. Like, will I be able to have the life? that I've imagined for myself. Um, and I, I guess the, the, the encouraging word would be is that we have to believe that God is a good God and a good father. One of the temptations of the garden was that God, by telling them that they could not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, when the devil said, hey, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What he's implying is God told you not to eat from this tree because he's withholding something good from you. Mm-hmm. And so I think we still do the same thing where we start to feel as if the season we're in is punishment and not protection. Yeah. And so I think we have to be reminded that, no, like God really is good. Yeah. By his very nature, yeah. good and sovereign and kind, and that he's with me, that I'm not alone in my singleness yeah, yeah. And, or my fertility. And, and, and even when we have this conversation, I'm trying my best to empathize because, I mean, I, I wasn't single a, a very long time before the Lord kind of revealed to me who my wife was. And mm-hmm. so I, I get that there is a real fear of people out there who say, man, I... I, I want to be married and I, I've been in the church for X amount of years and I just haven't found the man or I found the woman that I that I desire. And when I go to these, you know, secular, you know, spaces or whatever, I'm always meeting people who who spark my interest And these people in the Christian community just just doesn't do it. I, I get it. But I do think that if 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 the only thing that you're thinking about is marriage. Right. Um, and thinking about being with someone who who you enjoy right at the moment. And not thinking about all the things that will happen in the marriage that will be hard. Right. Like from when you're trying to teach your, your kids 
spiritual things and your spouse who doesn't have a spiritual framework comes along and, and tries to undo everything that that You're trying to teach. That, that you do yeah. and so it you know i i, I saw I, I i knew somebody who kind of went through something similar to that and it, and and this person almost kind of felt like they were parenting not only their kids but their spouse mm-hmm. that they that they were trying to be a a, a father mm-hmm. to to their wife and their kids mm-hmm. because you know where they were spiritually where they were spiritually yeah. and also having to go behind their spouse trying to undo a lot of toxic mm-hmm. worldly behavior that these that the, that their spouse has you know implemented and so when two people are not on the same page when it comes to spiritual things yeah. we have to understand that spiritual things affect so many other things it affects how we see money it affects how we parent our kids it affects how we um, respect our neighbor Mm -hmm. it 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 affects how we respond to people when we're disrespected i mean like it affects so much everything because you're in a covenant with this person absolutely i I think the the hard part though and because we know this from experience is you have some marriages where you entered into this relationship with the assumption that this person was a christian and was a believer, yet they are displaying the same fruit of unbelievers eventually, mm-hmm. right? And so how do, how do we also, like, are there particular things that we should be mindful of in the dating process, even when it comes to Christian? Because yes. just because a man is a Christian man doesn't mean that he's a Christian man for you. Yes. Okay? Just because a woman is a Christian woman doesn't mean that she's a Christian woman for you. So are there some things that we can discern or even pray about when it comes to that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Are are, are you asking? Is this is it a way that we can de- like determine whether somebody's actually a Christian? No, this isn't about questioning people's salvation. I'm saying that there are just because a Christ, just because a human being or a man or a woman is a Christian, mm-hmm. it does not mean that they will be a good spouse. Right. Got gotcha. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, are, is there some things that we can pray for and be aware of? Yes. Because, for example, absolutely, a man could have right theology. And be a righteous, a ratchet man. Yeah, like he can have all the boxes when it comes to to propitiation and atonement and sanctification, and still be wicked. But at the same time, like <laughs> well, we, we, then we his salvation has to be in question if he doesn't know how to apply what he knows. Potentially, potentially. But sometimes it takes a long time for you to see that, right? Yeah, especially if your framework for what a Christian is is only theology and not fruit. Yeah, absolutely. But that's a really good question, though, and I think you you. I think we've kind of spoken to this before. I think um, understanding um, and having a clear vision of does this person help fulfill the will that God has for me in my life? Interesting. Like, like if I if 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 I have a particular mission, do I see this person coming alongside me? And helping me fulfill the the purpose that God has for me in my life, right? Mm. And so if I feel called to a local community, if I feel called to build up a community, Mm -hmm. but this woman clearly thinks that God has called her to go around the world to preach the gospel, it's Mm kind of like, okay, we have to reexamine, you know, the calls on our life and... uh, and maybe I'm not the one that God has called for you to be be mm. in because our, our marriage is not just for us. Our marriage is a picture of the gospel, and our marriage is a union that 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 God has created to to help bring so, the so gospel to people. Let right? me clarify so, that because it's important. Yeah, because there are some people that you actually work well together, but y'all's life is on two trajectories. Right, where she might be called to be a missionary. And you might be called to be a pastor yeah. and there's no possibility of compromise. And so it's kind of on some, it's not even that we we're not good and we're not compatible is that we have two different missions from God that will not be able to be in alignment. And so maybe we need to go our separate ways because I might hold you back right. from what God has called you to do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a possibility. Or this, I mean, sometimes it can be, you know, what I felt like God was showing me. Uh, uh, maybe I was I was wrong, and I feel like God is calling me to to abandon that and 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 support you and right. what God has for you. But I do think that um, identifying how does this person help me fulfill the will of God in my life, mm-hmm. like you know what I'm saying. And so when I when I started to think about you. Um, in, in our dating process, I started to think about, man, like 
me and this woman, we both love art. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both have a uh, uh, a heart for the loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I'll never forget that time when we, when we were, I think we were dating and we, you was preaching at the gay pride parade outside and you began to cry and I was like, oh, I think I like this girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and, and, and so, and then like the way you would encourage me mm-hmm. and my gifts, you know what I'm saying? The way you would encourage me to continue to be holy and righteous and I was like, yo, this is the type of woman that I would want to be with. Mm-hmm. And so I think paying attention not to just how someone looks, mm-hmm. not to some, not not just, you know, if someone can cook like these these secondary things mm-hmm. are good, but they're not as important as is this person willing to help me be the better person of the better version of myself for yeah. Jesus so I can serve God and serve his people. And there's honestly honestly like um I'm going to have to add balance to this because it, it, it can, it, it's going to sound wrong. <laughs> but I think there's a level of mysticism involved. What, what, what? Has, is God leading you towards this person? Yeah. Like, is, is the holy... Because I, I think it is practical to say, okay, do they align with me theologically? Do they care about what I care about? Or am I willing to care about what they care about? Do they love family? Are they teachable? Yeah. Am, am I like, I think boxes and practical stuff is important, but the mysticism part is that is God leading me right. in this direction, right? Like with Paul, like the Holy Spirit was compelling him to go towards certain places. With Jesus in Luke 4, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. And so with when it came to you, there was a, a level of Holy Spirit guidance, yeah. literally people prophesying <laughs> that Preston Perry would be my husband. And I said, I have to temper it because there are a lot of people who will say that God told them that so-and-so is their husband and God ain't said nothing. Yeah. Right. But I don't think we should also discount the power of the spirit to use people and use means to confirm that somebody is your husband either. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, I think it, I think it gets sticky. I think one of the things that we, I, one of the things I think that we, that we have to consider in in thinking someone is our spouse is that God has given us um, unctions. I think God gives us. Because you prayed. Yeah. And the Lord showed you my face. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think God leads us, but I don't think that God, it's God's heart to to lead us apart from a community. Yes. Right. And so I think, I think, I think what happens is a lot of people will, 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 will pop their head up and say, oh, I think this person is my husband. I think this person is my wife. And there's no one around them to help confirm yeah. or to help give them confidence in right. what they're seeing if, if, if what they're seeing is correct or not mm-hmm. and so not only did i feel like god was leading me towards you but i had brian die i had men of god i said man like man I, i've watched your life i've watched jackie's i can see how that yeah. I can see why God would want that. Yeah. I see you guys working with one another. Let yeah. me let me let me pray with you. Let yeah. me you know what I'm saying. Let me go to the Lord with That's you. Great. And so I think the the God gives us a community of people to help confirm what we feel like God is leading us. Because to. because basically what you're saying, God uses the supernatural and the natural. Absolutely. And so the supernatural might be I feel an unction, a thought, an idea towards a certain individual. Let me take that to the Lord in prayer and say, God, please like use whatever to lead me in the right direction with this individual. Like God is too good of a father to leave us confused. If we want to be confused, it's because we want to be confused. Absolutely. And so it's like, God use this. And then through that, God uses natural means, people, conversations, uh, compatibility, compatibility. Like the Lord will send people like, I just don't, I don't, I don't see it. And everybody ain't a hater. Some people are just discerning, Yeah. you know? And yeah. so I think, I think it's both and I just didn't want to leave it all on the natural and also deny the fact that God speaks to his people. Yeah. 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 I believe that because I think even when I was trying to figure out, you know, if you were my my wife, like it was it was like almost scary how I how I started to think it just randomly. Tell the story. Uh, I think I told it in in another podcast. But but yeah, it was it was after I stopped talking to a particular girl and um, I had, I was sitting in my bed and I, I we took a break and I was trying to figure out if this person was the person for me. And I couldn't think about none of the things that 
that was spiritual when, when it comes to this person. Mm-hmm. I, it was all just surface thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I like the way she cooks and mm-hmm. she's nice and my family likes her and all of these things. And it was just like, I started to reexamine all of the, th- the things that I pray for in a wife that was spiritual. The times, we, we, we all have those times in our, in our spiritual walk when we, we had times where we was like really like connected with the Lord. We for were sure. praying, we were fasting. And every time I thought about those times and I prayed for a wife who was creative, I particularly pay, pray for a wife who, who's creative. Mm-hmm. I pray for a wife who loved theology. I pray for a wife who had natural hair. <laughs> I pray for a wife um, who um, would support me in everything that I that I that I did. I pray. I I, I pray for you. Aww. like literally. And so Blush. it was. It was. It was. It was. One day I was sitting in my bed, and I was as I was praying about somebody you couldn't like you literally couldn't pop out of my head. And so I started to like question, like mm-hmm. if all the people that in the past that said like Jackie would be a good person for me, mm-hmm. like was it something to that? Mm-hmm. I was like, and I was like, is Jackie my wife? And so I started to pray I about it. So. And the more I started to pray about it, the more I started to feel like God was like, Preston, I did not give you Jackie as a friend only like I'm calling you to to be with this woman and I and I and I remember I I tell people all the time that I I know it was God because every time God shows you something and I immediately get like fearful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it it always end up being the Lord because that's kind of how you know when it's the Lord and not your own flesh because you want God to confirm what your flesh wants yeah (laughs) it's almost like your flesh tries to like buck up against what you feel mm-hmm. like God is sh- That's good. showing you. Yeah. And it was kind of like, no, like, and I had all of these fears, like Jackie doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. And, so I was, and so I was like literally like saying like, try, in my mind, trying to sit, um, trying to like rationalize, how would I even go about trying to make Jackie like me? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing you liked me for a year. Yeah. I didn't even know that. And so like. Because I was on the other end praying that if it was God's will for us to be together, that God would put it on your heart to pursue me. So we were praying at the same time, at separate times, not knowing that it was happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I mean, I, and, I, and, I, and I say that to say this, um, that, that I did not feel confident um, that what God was showing me was him really showing me until I had men in the body who was mature, um, who I respected, who came alongside and said, I think what God is showing you might be, might be him. And at the same time, I had folks like Melody Fabian who was like, okay, Jackie, I understand that he has made his intentions very plain, but I do not want you to start moving and acting like he's your husband if he has not made that commitment to you yet. Mm -hmm. And that was good. She was like, because your imagination will start to go all kinds of ways where it's like, nah, like until that man proposes, he is not your husband, period. You know, and so, because I I think this is like, we start, you know, oh, we're going to get married. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's like, nah, a part of the dating period is to discern if this person is for you or not. Yeah. Right? I I never forget the day. I'm going to just go on a little tangent. Okay. And, um, I'll never forget the day you looked at me differently. I was like, whoa. Don't recall this. The, the day we kissed uh-huh. on the steps. I was like, hey. Why are we sharing this? That's the first time she looked at me different. Like, she looked at me with this. You had a little twinkle in your eye. It was, was lust. Like, Let's be clear. What? It was lust. The, the, the twinkle was lust? That was lust. That, was, that wasn't the spirit. But I'm just saying, though, you looked at me like. Because I was lustful. We're going to be married one day. Yep. <laughs> was hoping that it would come soon. <laughs> that's exactly that, that was a, the twinkle of the devil. Uh, <laughs> the twinkle of the devil. That's, that's exactly what it was. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Because uh, you know he was the star that got thrown down from heaven. <laughs> um, anywho, I, I just I just want to encourage encourage the saints. If if I also want y'all to go back and listen to our podcast called the Idolatry of Marriage, because I don't want this to to this this episode to be a temptation to make you discontent with the season you're in. Yeah. I don't want that either because God has called many people to singleness. And the beautiful thing about that is, is that, hey, we all going to be single in glory. And so uh, the single people actually have a unique advantage of experiencing uh, what it will look like 
to be with God as our husband and us as the bride forever. And single people have a, a unique advantage to serve God in ways that married people can't. Yeah, undivided. Y'all think I'm an evangelist now. Y'all should have seen me when I was single. Mm-hmm. I was on the west, north, and south side of Chicago every day giving the mm-hmm. gospel. With a bad credit score. But the, the <laughs> word <Whoa>. is... <laughs> Disrespect. The word is... Your credit score is 434. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't have a score. Dang. That's how bad your score was. How do you know I wanted the people to know that? <laughs> you didn't have how a you score. Know? Like, we had to create. How do you know? A score for you. The, uh, I knew I married the right person when our uh, first year, not, not even our first year, our first month in marriage. Mm-hmm. You said, the first two things I'm going to do is I'm going to help you not go to the hospital because your pancreatitis because I was eating um, Chinese food and Skittles every All day. And I lived in one of the worst neighborhoods in the west side of Chicago. And we had no Whole Foods. Uh-huh. So she, she she was like, I'm going to cook healthy for you and I'm going to raise your credit score, help you raise your credit score. Mm-hmm. And so the first time I look hit at a, you now. 700, I was like, wow. Look at you now. I feel important. Interest rate is on fleek. <laughs> anyway, what I want to say is, please, please, if the Lord has called you to marriage, has called you to be unified with another individual for the rest of your life to the glory of his name, I need you to wait on the Lord. Impatience is a thing, but impatience can lead us to all kinds of idolatry. It is not foreign to me that in Exodus 32, when Moses is on Mount Sinai getting the tablets, the people are down at the ground saying, we don't know what happened to Moses. Mm. And do you know what happened? Because they didn't know what was going on. They constructed a golden calf. They created an idol out of their impatience instead of waiting on the Lord. And so what I do not want you to do is bring all kinds of suffering and discipline into your life simply because you are afraid that God will not be good to you. He is a good God yeah. all the time and all the time he is good. So basically what she's trying to say is if you in church and you you're, you're a lady, young lady in church and you look around. Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to get to the men later. Okay. And uh, you look around and all the men got their shoes tied up real tight. And um, um, they got on bootcut jeans and stuff like that. Uh, bootcut is coming back, though. I'll, I'll let that slide. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is coming back. <laughs> uh, wait on the Lord. And if you a man and you feel like all the women are, I don't know, cornballs. Or you feel like the women are too uptight. I've, I've heard brothers say, oh, women just so uptight and they they always complaining even though the problem with the men ain't even waiting it's having too many options but that's another conversation for another day yeah yeah wait on the lord no let's talk about it we're here two minutes what word do you have for these men who because they have so many women available to them they're actually not choosing one what's the word i think a lot of men haven't ch- haven't chosen haven't chose I'm sorry a wife yet because they like the attention that they're getting from all of these women. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's I think to get attention to 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 be a, a a single attractive man in the in the body of Christ um, can sometimes be seen as a rare thing. And if it's rare, you're always going to get a lot of attention. So like I see these guys. Um, who be thirst trapping to just be all the time <laughs> to be frank and it's like you like your wife you probably met your wife like four girls ago <laughs> but like you 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 like the attention that you're getting from all of these women on social media and you trying to like form it in like like as this like this godly man who's on the on a quest for a godly woman and you know i i just really think that we have to uh ex- like like we can't escape social media, but I, I do think that men have to be discipled by mm. by strong male leaders in the church and for strong male leaders to call out these men and say, man, like, what are you, like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, like, what are you doing? And you know what, what, what grieves me for them is that I feel like they're wasting their life because you're running through women, running through women, running through women. And what's going to happen is you end up being 40 and alone. Yeah. And so. Or that, settling for somebody who's going to make your life hard. Yeah. That's my fear. It's like, and not, like y'all, you, you, you're wasting your time when you could be on mission 
with a good woman, a godly woman, making disciples of all nations. Um, but instead, you know, you, you, you like you get like your little identity fix. Yeah, you like um, having like comments and posts about how attractive and godly you are. Yeah, it's worldly. Yeah. We don't have that much time on this earth to to waste our time with frivolous matters. So, yeah, I hope this blessed y'all um, and all the things. Peace. Bye.